Sharing of files is still one of the main reasons why people want to purchase and configure and set up their servers. And in this lesson, we're going to see just how to do that. I'm going to go here on my Rock One server into the file sharing pane. We have been here before, but I have reinstalled Rock One server since we were here last. So we're down to just the three standard share points, groups, public, and users. The service is already on. It's just a slider switch. And it is very simple to configure these share points. For example, here's users. Here's the user share point. And to configure it, we click on the gear down here at the bottom of the window. And then we select edit share point, or you can just use command and the down arrow or even just double click on it. Once we're in there, we can see that the top part of the window is reserved for naming your SharePoint and also for setting the permissions in the rectangle below the naming of the SharePoint. You can have multiple permissions here, multiple levels. So instead of just one owner, one group, and one everyone else setting, we can use access control lists to add more levels of information. So for example, I could add in something here for the employees group by typing the first few characters of it and then choosing employees and making it read and write. Now, I'm not going to actually save that, but cancel out when I'm done. We can also turn on different protocols down here in the lower part of the window. By default, it'll automatically be enabled for AFP and SMB, and any new share points, not just users, will also be enabled for those protocols. We can optionally turn on WebDAV for our iOS devices and other computers. We can turn on or off guest access, and we can make the users available for home directories over AFP or SMB. Now I'm going to cancel out of this because I don't really want to make any changes to the user's SharePoint. Let's take a quick look at public. In public, it is pre-set up by Apple to be accessed by everyone for read-only purposes, and only the system admin and administrators have write access. Also, Workgroup has some custom permissions, but note that we can't examine what these custom permissions are right here. There's a different place in Server App where we go to edit permissions on these SharePoints if we need to get more custom or detailed information. So rather than just staying here, let me show you where that place is. We're going to first cancel out of editing the public SharePoint and then go to the Rock One listing here under hardware and then to storage. And then we can go find that public SharePoint on my server HD. There's my two hard drives available for sharing. Data looks like this because we are still set up to do local time machine backups to it. And Server HD, if we click on the Disclosure Triangle, will show us the file system. And Public happens to be under Shared Items, and we don't have anything inside of Public. So in order to edit those permissions, again, we go down to the Gear menu, and we choose Edit Permissions. You should by now recognize the theme with the Gear, or the Action menu as it's also called. It will give you access to things, usually the editing of those objects, and a few other features as well. So here we can take a look at the work group and see by clicking on the disclosure triangle that the work group is set up for read, write, and inheritance. And if we want to see more details about that access control list, we can click on the disclosure triangles. Unfortunately, I can't drag the corner of this window down and make it larger. So you're gonna to have to scroll up and down in order to see all of that information. Maybe not the best user interface here, but it is functional and it does work. So I'm gonna cancel out of that because I don't want to make any changes to public. Let's go back over to file sharing. And lastly, we have the groups SharePoint and by Default, the groups SharePoint is going to be where any groups like the built in work group or the work groups we've added later, like project and employees, will have their shared group folders. You don't have to put them there. We can see again the permissions, the definition of the settings, and one more thing I haven't showed you the little view files with the arrow. Click on that and it will go straight over into that file hierarchy listed under the hardware storage settings. 
So that is another way you can just jump right to the folder to define permissions or check on what's inside of that. And you can see in this particular case, our groups folder has the work group that's built in and a folder for local accounts. So that's how to turn on, set up and configure file sharing. We also have the FTP service we'll get to later, but it's not included in file sharing anymore. And we will see how to define our own custom SharePoints in the next few lessons.